Hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of Retina Roundup. I'm Dr. Meru Agustin, fellow in Vitreo Retina and Ocular Oncology, and I'm going to take you through this month's top five articles. Let's start with the first article, which studied about the efficacy and safety profile of intravitreal dexamethasone implant versus antivascular endothelial growth factor treatment in diabetic macular edema in a systematic review and meta-analysis. This study included randomized control trials and non-randomized control trials before December 2021 that compared the efficacy of OSIBIX-related therapy and anti vegf therapy. 30 studies were included, and regarding the best corrected visual acuity change, the overall result revealed no significant differences between OSIDEX and anti vegf therapies in patients with non-resistant DME. But OSIDEX group had significantly more visual acuity improvement than anti vegf therapies in patients with resistant DME. In terms of central retinal thickness decrease, there was a significant difference between OSIDEX therapy and anti vegf therapy in patients with non-resistant DME and resistant DME. So overall, OSIDEX therapy resulted in significantly greater visual acuity improvement and central retinal thickness decrease than anti vegf therapy in resistant DME patients. OSIDEX therapy was not inferior to anti vegf therapy in patients with non-resistant DME. The second article studied the incidence and risk factors for delayed retinal tears after an acute symptomatic posterior vitreous detachment. Acute and symptomatic PVD or posterior vitreous detachment was defined as experiencing flashes or floaters for one month or less at the time of diagnosis. A total of 389 eyes from 389 patients who had acute and symptomatic PVDs without concurrent retinal tears or detachments at di diagnosis were included. This study demonstrated that 7.39% of the patients developed delayed retinal tears by 6.24 years after PVD diagnosis, with many developing tears well after a typical six-week follow-up time for PVD. Of these tears, 50% occurred within 4.63 months of PVD diagnosis and 63.46% occurred within one year of PVD diagnosis. Those who were younger, myopic or had lattice degeneration were more likely to develop tears. These findings can guide clinicians in establishing optimal follow-up protocols for patients with acute symptomatic PVD. Moving on to the third study, which evaluated the characteristics of retinal microvascular changes in diabetic patients with diabetic nephropathy and its risk factors. 145 patients with type 2 diabetes mellitus and diabetic nephropathy were included in this study. Diabetic retinopathy accounted for 61.4% in type 2 diabetes mellitus patients with diabetic nephropathy. Diabetic retinopathy group had significantly higher levels of LDL cholesterol, HbA1c, urine albumin creatine ratio or ACR, and lower levels of EGFR. Subjects with ACR stage 3 had higher incidence of DR compared with subjects with ACR stage 1. 138 eyes of 138 patients were analyzed for hard exudates and DME of which 23.2% had hard exudates in posterior pole and 9.4% had DME. Visual equity was worse in hard exudates group than in non-hard exudates group. And there was significant difference in the LDL cholesterol level, total cholesterol level and ACR between the hard exudates group and non-hard exudates group. Thus, it was concluded that there is a relatively higher prevalence of DR found in type 2 diabetes mellitus patients with diabetic nephropathy. ACR stage could be recognized as a risk factor for diabetic retinopathy in diabetic nephropathy patients, and patients with diabetic nephropathy needs ophthalmic evaluation more timely and more frequently. Coming to the fourth article, which dealt with the association between the frequency of wet age-related macular degeneration recurrences and the seasons of the year. 
129 IVs with 171 recurrences in patients suffering from wet AMD were included in this study. All the patients had been treated with intravitreal anti injections according to prorenata treatment regimen. Recurrence was defined as the redetection of subretinal fluid, intraretinal fluid, and or or submacular hemorrhage in optical coherence tomography scans after at least two consecutive monthly examinations with a dry macula. The year was divided in three four-month periods based on the weather conditions prevailing in each period. The mean temperature and hours of sunlight exposure were the main weather markers recorded. In the study, it was demonstrated that the frequency of wet AMD recurrences is significantly elevated during the warmer months, possibly due to the higher levels of UV radiation and mean temperature. However, further research is necessary to validate these findings. Heading towards the last study, central retinal pain occlusion, 36 month outcomes with antigen. Overall, 527 treatment naive CRBO eyes that commenced VEGF inhibitors between December 1, 2010 and 2018 were included in this study. The main outcome measures assessed were mean change in visual acuity from baseline to 36 months, injections, visits, completion, switching, and suspension of therapy more than 180 days at the final review. Patients with CRBO that commenced VEGF inhibitors in routine care for whom follow-up was available had a visual acuity improvement of around 12 letters at three years, but with more than 50% loss to follow-up, the visual acuity outcome for the entire group was likely worse. The choice of VEGF inhibitor influenced central subfield thickness, but not visual acuity outcomes. The adjusted mean visual acuity change was similar to each wedge of inhibitor despite a greater reduction in central subfield thickness with aflibercept versus ranibizumab and bevacizumab. It was estimated that around half of the eyes were still receiving injections after 36 months. That brings us to the end of this session. Thank you for your patient listening.